so this is a continuation of the uh, last video so at the end of the last video I mentioned that uh, there is one more way to do the remote packet capture which is using the RPCAPD program the remote packet capture the program so uh, in this video I'm gonna talk about how you can use RPCAPD uh, program to do the remote packet capture so uh, let's get started uh, so you know this is the setup so uh, again we have uh, this remote machine uh, this can be windows or the linux machine but you know this should be running rpkpd uh, the program and then in the local machine uh, the, we are going to use a wireshark to display the packet you know the packet captured in the remote machine uh, using the uh, rpkpd daemon so if you see you know this uh the topology in here uh this is a uh, you know that the uh, server client architecture so rpkpd is uh, acting as a self you know server and then wireshark is uh, acting as a client and the display the packets you know captured in the rp you know by the rpkpd daemon in the remote machine um, specifically speaking uh the the, the the libraries that Wireshark is using is supporting the remote packet capture. So in the case of the Windows, uh, Windows is uh, the Windows Wireshark is using uh, WinPCAP or the NPCAP. So by default, you know, in the WinPCAP or the NPCAP, the remote packet capture is enabled. But in the case of the Linux, uh, Linux Wireshark, uh, it is using uh the lippy cap library but you know in this uh, in this library remote packet capture is not enabled by default so that if you want to use uh if you want to use that uh, the wireshark uh in the linux then you are going to have to recompile this lippy cap program again with uh, this remote packet capture you know, feature enabled so i'm going to talk about it later you know at the end of this video uh, so let uh, next, let's talk about uh, how we can install the RPKPD you know, program. So as I mentioned, that this remote pro, you know remote machine uh, is a run a running remote machine can be a Windows machine or the Linux machine. So in the case of the Windows, uh, it is very easy to install WinPCAP uh, the RPKPD program. So all you have to do is uh, you know go to this website in here and then download the WinPCAP program and then just install it. Uh, so by default, WinPCAP program comes with the uh, RPCAP uh, program. So after the installation, uh, if you go to the installation fold, you know, folder, then you are gonna see you know this program. Uh, so actually, you know, this is uh, my Windows machine where I installed. Uh, WinPCAP program and then as you can see after the installation there is uh, this program in here so let's go in this folder so uh, this is that the uh, RPKT program and uh, so with a minus s switch uh, you can see all the you know the all the options in here and then the way how you can run uh, this program is uh, uh, just uh, uh, you can you can run this program uh, so minus n means that the no authentication for the client and then minus p specifies the the port that the rpkpd program is running uh, so that's how you can install rpkpd program in the windows machine but in the case of the Linux, you know, let's say that you are using uh, uh, Linux for the remote machine. So in the case of the Linux, then uh, this is that the Git repository where you can download the Linux RPKPD program. So let's go to uh, that website in here. So this website so this is where you can download rpkpd linux program and then uh, so this is how you you know you can compile 
and uh, you know how you you know, how you can run this program in the Linux machine as well. So simply, you can just uh, follow you know the instructions in here to compile this program. So let's do that. Uh, so this is a uh, my Linux machine in the same network, and uh, simply just I'm gonna follow the instruction in this you know git repository to compile this program so in the case yeah so uh, my machine is a uh, uh, ubuntu 20.04 so if you compile this program just following the instructions in the git repository you are not gonna see any problem if you compile this in Ubuntu 18.04 but if you compile this in Ubuntu 20.04 you are gonna hit this problem so let's see what kind of a prob you know, problem you are gonna hit and then how you can resolve that problem so first I'm gonna, I'm gonna install some packages uh, uh, to resolve some de you know, dependencies So in, uh, in my case, I you know I already installed these packages, so that that is why I'm getting this error message. But in your case, if uh, they are not installed, then you are gonna have to install them. And uh, so now I'm just uh, simply following uh, the instructions uh, in the Git repository, and now I'm gonna config to generate the make file and then compile. So now, as you can see, so during the compilation, you hit error message. You know, error. You you get an, you get on this error message. So basically, it says that you know this is uh, undeclared, not defined. So the reason why you are actually so I was googling. You know, I was googling about this error message, and then uh, this website gave me some hint. And then basically, what it says is uh. uh in Ubuntu 20.04, there is uh, some change in kernel header files compared to 18.04. So that is why you are getting you know, this error message. So uh, how to resolve this is uh, so basically this is uh, you know, this is uh, defined in some other you know the header file. So basically what you have to do is uh, open up this file and then uh, in the so in the include section at the end, just uh, insert this line. So this is you know this file is where that you know this uh, this is defined now in twenty dot four, and then now save out, uh, then compile it again. Then it is gonna compile okay in Ubuntu twenty dot four. As you can see, this is a compiled OK, so, uh, so I'm gonna go back up one folder, and uh, so this is the last step for the compilation. So it is compiled OK. Once the compilation is done, then you are gonna see this RP get the you know, program. Uh, so you can run this you know, from the command line. Or maybe you can run, you know, this uh, you know system D service file like this, and then you know make this program start automatically when the system comes up, right? So, I mean, this is just uh, uh, for the convenience, but we don't we don't really have to do this. So, uh, for this demonstration, I'm gonna just run this program from the you know command line. Oh, uh, by the way, so so I have a. Uh, I have a lot of interfaces in here, but there is only one. Uh, there is only one uh, wireless uh, interface in here, and then already just for this demonstration, I put it into the monitor mode so that I can capture the radio information. You know, row eight hundred two dot eleven uh, Wi-Fi packet. Just I want to capture Wi-Fi pack. You know, Wi-Fi packets in the uh, air. So. I only have a one Wi-Fi interface in here, so okay. So so let's run. Uh, I'll get the 
program here so now I'm running RTKFD program in remote machine so this is a uh, you know 172.16.1.60 and then I'm gonna go back to my Windows machine so this time I'm gonna use this Windows machine as a uh, as a client so open up the Wireshark and then go to the uh, capture options and then manage interface and uh, in the remote interface oh okay so let me let me remove actually you know before uh, this uh, you know before this video recording I tested this that's why you know the configuration is still in here but uh, I'm gonna remove this and then start again okay let me clear okay I'm gonna start Wireshark again uh, dot one dot sixteen this is a remote machine where we are running RTKD demo and then port was a 2002 and uh, we are not doing any any authentication for the client so I'm gonna uh, click yes and then now it is gonna display all the interfaces in the remote machine but I'm only interested in the Wi-Fi interface so this interface just I'm gonna select only this interface and then click OK and uh, now I'm gonna start capturing the packet on this interface in the remote machine so let's get started so as you can see now I'm capturing the packet you know Wi-Fi packet uh, in the uh, in the remote machine interface this is not the local you know local interface right so let's just stop so basically this is a how you know this is how you can to uh, you, you can use that uh, RP get the program to do the remote pack capture and uh, so again you, you know so uh, in the Windows Wireshark uh, you know Windows Wireshark is using WinPack you know WinPack cap uh, or the MP cap so they you know they they support the remote packet capture by default so in the in the windows wireshark you are gonna see you know this menu you know this menu by default but in the case of the linux you are not gonna see you know so in the case of the linux uh, linux is using vp cap and then by default you know this is not enabled so that if you want to use a uh, uh, wireshark in the in the linux machine then you are going to have to recompile this vpcap program uh, with a remote you know remote support enabled and then this website shows how you can recompile with a remote support enabled in the vpcap program so basically uh, you know this is a uh, this is that website and uh, you can just simply follow these steps you know these steps in here to enable uh, to enable the remote packet capture support in the Linux you know Wireshark version uh, yeah thank you uh, I, I hope I mean this was a uh, uh, this was a helpful for some people uh, you know that's that's all that matters okay yeah thank you bye